welcome back for ground up configuration two. We are going to check how we can do much faster configuration of Skahoy panels than what we did in number one. So now we understand the basic principles of configuring a controller, but how can we do it faster with a more flow, with a more interactive feel of working with the controller. So that's what we are going to look at in this video. We'll also be looking at how we can color a panel and how we can synchronize the configuration specs to the server. Let's get started. We uh, start where we left off in the previous video. And instead of going to the online configuration website, let me just shut that down and then open the firmware application. Well, uh, there it is, no problem. Then I'm now going to local configuration. Local configuration is now opening a web browser with access to a local web interface on this device. So you see the IP address right there. It means that my laptop and the device has to be on the same network, otherwise it won't work. But clicking that button enables that web server in the controller and gives me direct access into that. I cannot add any device calls in this interface, but I can configure everything I did online. So let me just click this button, for instance, and you'll see that uh, the downstream key uh, action we assigned in the online interface is found right here. Now, there was this change with the um, uh, hold down action. Um, I want... I. I designed it to be hold down, sorry, the key action, upstream key one, that action was assigned to be hold down. I don't want it like that. I want it to be a uh, an auto, for instance. All right? So I changed that. And now, um, just, just look at what it does right now before I do anything. So I hold down, I release it again, hold down, release it again. And on the ATEM switcher, you can see in this software that it is only active for as long as I hold the button. Now, I changed it to auto. I now press save. And in this moment, it is, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't hold it. I should just press it because you see what happens. Instantly, this change of configuration was active on the controller. It even changed the label in the display of the function uh, on the controller. So uh, that's really powerful. And the point of what I wanted to show you that we have much more speed by uh, managing uh, the controller in the local web interface instead. Now let's add more features. For instance, we had the fade to black over here, so we want to do this. Uh, find fade to black in the list. Okay, let's do that. Let's save and see if fade to black... Yeah, it, it now becomes lit, and I have fade to black going on when I'm pressing this button. Super! Now I want to have... Uh, on this one, I want to select media stills, for instance. So um, let's assign media stills to this guy say media stills up to 10 in bank number one. Uh, I want encoder two to do something similar. So I'll insert this and do it for media player number two. And I am saving and we'll see instantly. Now we have access to media player number one. I can browse through these. Uh, if we go to the tab over here, you can see the media stills. I'm now selecting between media stills as I'm turning this knob and I'm rotating up you know, from index one up to number 10. Uh, for media player number two by those knobs. So quickly configured by using this interface. Now, um, I wanted to show you about coloring. Obviously, uh, this is nicely colored. Sometimes I prefer to have a different color for media player number one to select that as the input source. Why? Because it's different from a camera input. So um, what I can do in terms of that is go back to my web interface and then if I click media player here, then I can add an action called system local color. So I choose, um, I normally go by rose or pink or something. Doesn't really matter so, too much. Just keep in mind, as soon as I press the save button, notice what the color change will be here. It is now a different color. So in that way, you can color code your keyboard. And I want to apply that to those keys because obviously I have three uh, keys here, which are um, different from those over here. But I want to have like, um, I want to color it. Uh, first of all, I want it to be different than white. And that's what I'm going to do now. So um, notice on the controller, let's just zoom in here. Section two is um, including a group of these six buttons. And sections on a controller is something you can use for exactly that, setting colors that are true for that section. So when I'm now changing the local color to be, uh, let me see, I like um, green. So I will, let me just zoom out here and then press save. Now notice all these keys, they are green. But 
I only want these to be green. I want those to be a different color. Um, anyway, by the way, talking about coloring, you can actually define, because you can see now as I'm changing here, if I wanted to do something else slightly wacky and simply have blue as the off color, I could now select um, blue as my off color. And uh, you can see off is dimmed, meaning that it will be dimmed like it is right now. I can actually make off bright instead. So if I save this, you'll see that the off state is simply blue and bright blue instead of green. Okay, so let's just keep that, although it's kind of unusual. But um, I want to have different coloring for the kiosk. So I go now to X1 and X2. And for those two, the downstream key actions here, I'm going to override the local color action I was setting for the whole section by adding this one, just like I did for the media player key. I want them to be amber. And I now want to insert that down here. And actually, in a sense, it's much quicker to just insert and change DS key one to two. And um, that's gonna give me what I want. Let me just see. Yes. And then the final one, I want this one to be purple. So I add a local color. I set it to be purple and save. There you go coloring of the panel. I could do similar things over here and whatnot, but this quick we could um, configure the panel and tweak it to the exact settings I want. The only thing that's the problem is that I saved all this stuff down into the local memory of this panel. And as we have been discussing in previous videos, when I update the firmware from online, I'm going to remove all the actions. I'm going to remove maybe the IP address and you know, the local configuration is probably going to be washed out as I'm making an update from online. So therefore, what we do now is go to the bottom of this local interface and press the button called Sync to Course Server. So let's do that. You can see I can choose between either a new configuration or I can override our current online configuration. Let's do that. So our online awesome configuration will update it. And this is how quickly that's done. I am now opening the Skahoy firmware application, pressing online configuration, that brings us to the online interface. So now we can verify if that configuration we had locally on this controller is moved to the database online and thereby preserved for the future. Let's check. We are looking at these actions. You see the downstream key, local color, all those things that we just did is safe and sound on the local, uh, sorry, on in, in the database on the online Skahoy course server saved for you. You can copy it, share it and all those bells and whistles. And when you press check for updates to get new firmware updates for the ATEM switcher, for instance, your configuration will be preserved. So that's what we wanted to cover in ground up lesson number two.